on, everybody. Let's do this. Here we go. Hello Musketeers, welcome to Mondays with Mickey. My name is Mike Kniggy, I am your host, and this is a late night edition of Mondays with Mickey. Uh, this week we're going to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, I actually saw this movie a couple weeks ago, and I was planning on doing this, this review last week, but, you know, life got in the way, family issues and so forth. Um, so, I'm bringing it to you this week. Uh, just a warning before we get started, I'll likely throw out some spoilers. So, let's jump right into it. I personally really enjoyed Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Alright, um, I think it was a very fitting follow-up to the original movie. Um, James Gunn did an amazing job, yet again, of weaving in music from our childhoods. You know, from the 80s and the 90s, well, 80s primarily. Um, you know, the inclusion of Kurt Russell as, uh, spoiler alert, Star Lord's dad, Ego. Uh, those who are familiar with the comic books know that Ego is also a planet, uh, which you know that was included in the movie. The fact that he's actually a planet, not just you know Kurt Russell, um, with cameos from people like uh, David Hasselhoff. Howard the Duck is back in it again. Um, I mean, there's just a never-ending sea of cameos and characters that we hadn't seen yet. Um, you know, Stanley's Stanley has two major cameos in the movie, both of them alongside the Watchers from Marvel Comics, which is fantastic. Um, the movie essentially takes place months, mere months, after uh, the last Guardians movie. You know, Groot's no longer uh, contained to his uh, flower pot. He's he's basically a kid. Um, but it kind of follows the premise of, you know, in the first movie, you're finding your family. Uh, this movie is more about not finding family, but what does family mean? Is blood more important than those who have earned the title of brother or sister or whatever? Um, and that, this movie really touches in on that. Uh, they really explore um, the relationship between Star-Lord and the Ravagers, particularly Yondu. Um, I, I, fanta fantastic performance, by the way, by Michael Roger. It unbelievable job as Yondu. You know, he was a lot. He was funny. I enjoyed him in the first movie. Sorry about that, guys. I had to move the camera a little bit. Uh, he was funny. I really enjoyed him in the first movie, but in this movie, he really shines. They dig into his his past. Um, you find out that you know. You know, obviously we know that he essentially kidnapped Star Lord when he was a kid, and that's actually his particular group of Ravagers were kicked out of the Ravagers because he was dealing with children. But what you don't know, and you find out in this movie, is that yes, he was kicked out for in for child trafficking, but when he realized what was happening with these kids, that's when he decided to basically rebel and uh, basically keep Star Lord. You know, Star Lord was the last, or Quill, was the last kid that he kidnapped. For, again, spoiler alert, ego. Um, you know, there's a lot of details in this movie. I would love to go into all of them. Um, but honestly, <laughs> just go see it. Uh, it is fantastic. You know, they really dig into the deep. It's not your standard superhero fl film. They really take time to dig into 
the story and the background of these characters, but they do so in a hilariously funny way. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was not a disappointment in any form or fashion. Uh, and honestly, if that's going to be the caliber of movies moving forward, I'm excited. I can't wait to see them. So, um, basic story, basic uh, outline of the film. Uh, you find them again a few months later. Groot's not a kid any as, as a kid, not a uh, a baby plant anymore. Um, they're fighting a monster that has been eating these batteries um, for the um, sovereign. They fight the monster, and then of course Rocket and his rocket-like self steals said batteries, and the sovereign realize it um, after the fact, obviously after they're leaving. So this starts this whole chase throughout the entire movie, the Sovereign hunting them down, trying to kill them. Uh, Ego comes out of nowhere and saves their butts. Uh, when the Sovereign lose track of the Guardians, they hire the Ravagers, specifically Michael Roker's uh, Ravagers, the Yondu's Ravagers, uh, to hunt down Quill and so forth. And of course, they succeed, they catch him. But, Yondu being Yondu, um, he doesn't follow through quite the way he was going to. He decided he was going to screw the Sovereign. Excuse my language. He was going to turn on the Sovereign. Sorry. Um, he decided to turn on them, and then his crew decided to turn on him. You know, his, his crew's been kind of sore about the fact that, you know, they lost their status with the Ravagers, so they're kind of second-class citizens now. Um, they're, they're sore about the fact that he keeps letting Quill go. And so, you know, they turn on him. You know... Unfortunately for them, that sounded like an owl. Hmm. You hear frogs, but I just heard an owl, I think. I'm pretty sure. So anyway, uh, they're sore about it. They turn on him. And, you know, it goes to this whole mess of Yandu teaming up with Rocket and Groot to escape the uh, Ravagers. Killing them all, of course, in the process. Uh, with the exception of, you know, his right-hand man who uh, initially turned on him, but came back and redeemed himself in the end. So, all this time, while they're fighting, trying to escape, and like I said, it's just Yondu, Rocket, and Groot. They get, the Rocket and Groot get separated from Quill and uh, Drax and Gamora. So, while, while this is all happening, Quill, Drax, and Gamora are off with Ego on his planet, which they don't realize is actually him. So they're kind of staying on his back. You know, figuring out what's going on there. Turns out Ego's an egomaniac. Dun dun dun! And he's been killing off all these kids. Which, you find out, is not just kids, they're his own children. Apparently he decided to travel throughout the galaxy uh, impregnating every woman he could find from every race looking for somebody who could carry on his powerful genes so that him and his successful child could help take over the galaxy, or the universe, essentially. Um, turns out, Quill, which, if you'll know from the first movie, Quill survived, ooh, shadow, uh, Quill survived holding the Infinity Stone. Well, he survived holding the Infinity Stone because he's got these abilities, he's got this strength, comes from his father, uh, Ego. So, turns out, he's got the gift, and, uh, you know, they're getting ready to basically rule the whole universe. Um, until finally he finds out, essentially, what, what, the kicker. He finds out a few things. He gets music and things like that, and he cares about Gamora and whatever. He retains some of his humanity through little bits and pieces, but the final kicker is the moment where you learn that Ego is responsible for his mother's death. Ego put the tumor in her head because he was going to go ahead and kill off Quill anyway. So he killed his mother, and then as they're going back and forth, you killed my mom and all, all this, he destroys Quill's Walkman. Obviously, you know, the Walkman is a huge thing for him. That's his connection to his mom, and uh, he destroys it. Quill goes berserk. So they're fighting back and forth, and like I said, there's a ton in this movie. I guess I'm, I'm going through a lot of bits and pieces, um, but basically at the end of the day, the Sovereign catch up to them, along with um, yeah, Yondu and, and Rocket Them. It gets in this big climactic battle. Um, I'm not going to give details at the end, but there is a sacrifice, the heartbreaking moment of the movie, where essentially Yondu 
um, comes clean to Quill that he's always looked at him like a son and Quill realizes that Yondu's essentially been the father that he's never recognized throughout his life just in time for Yondu to sacrifice himself to save Quill. Which, incidentally, at the end, because they've now saved the universe yet again, now they're two-time galaxy savers, they can up their rates, the Ravagers apparently decide to let bygones be bygones and say that he's redeemed, to say that Yondu's redeemed himself. Now, granted, there's only one Ravager left from Yondu's Ravagers, um, but they've decided, they decide at the very end of the movie to honor him as a Ravager um, because he's essentially redeemed himself. So, this has been a lot of babbling about the movie. Nutshell, I really enjoyed it. It's a movie that is fantastic in theaters. I would seriously suggest, if you have the means, you have the ability, go see it in theaters. I'm sure it's going to be great on the small screen. You know, I'm looking forward to owning it. But, I do not regret spending the money on this ticket. Honestly, if I had the extra money, I would have seen it in IMAX and gotten the grander scope of what the movie could have been. So, um, final review. I loved it. I'll say 5 out of 5. Maybe 4.9 out of 5. Little details here and there uh, that they changed and tweaked. Like there's an oops. Um, you know, for those who are really anal um, in Stanley's cameo, he's talking about an event. Uh, where he played, he cameoed in a movie, and the movie, if you follow history, follow the timeline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, doesn't quite match up. Um, you know, this is only supposed to take place months after um, the last uh, Guardians movie, and he references a cameo that he once did in Civil War, which came out after. Guardians. So, a ways after Guardians, actually. So, but, ha, ah, being attacked. Maybe I should start doing these things inside more often. I'm starting to think that might be the best case. So, anyway. So, aside from the little minor continuity issues, and you could explain that away. It's not the end of the world. And James Gunn's actually already commented on it, saying, look, I oopsed. Sorry. Not the end of the world. You can't explain away why him talking to the Watchers he explains that, but I'm not going to get into that. So because of that, I'll say 4.99 out of 5. I really enjoyed the movie. I'm looking forward to seeing it again, actually. We were just watching a thing about all the Easter eggs in the movie. There are tons of them. And if you do see the movie, make sure you stay all the way to the end of the credits. There's probably five cutscenes in the credits that you'll miss if you leave at the beginning of the credits. Also, if you pay attention to the credits, there's several points in the credits where you see I am Groot. And then it changes to English, and it you know, says the person's name or whatever. And at the very end of the credits, it talks about how no raccoons or uh, walking trees were harmed in the making of this film. However, their handlers, can, it can't be said the same for, the, for their handlers. It's really cute, really funny. So, again, I really enjoyed this movie. I think you guys would really enjoy it. Uh, go out, check it out. Leave in the comments below what you thought of the movie, what you liked, what you hated. Love to hear your feedback on the movie. And we'll leave you as I leave you every single week. I hope you never lose sight of one thing. This was all started by a mouse. Thank you so much for watching this crazy edition of Mondays with Mickey with my rambling about Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you guys next week.